chapter 3. Look at verse 12, Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. Put on therefore as the elect of God. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man has a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, verse 14, pit on charity, love, pit on love, which is the bond of perfection. Saints, let me give you a secret about the bond of perfection. It's the bondage of perfection. Saints, bond is a short word for bondage. That's why when someone is in jail, you pay bond. Because the bond is you paying for them to get out of bondage. So it's telling you that there is a love that is a bondage love. And that's why Apostle Paul said, I am the prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because this is the bond realm of love. This is where you can't get away from Jesus because you're not like the crowd. He's talking about a bond. A perfection. In another text, it says the bond of perfectness. So when perfection is made full, it's called perfectness. The same way you have so much of God operating through you, we call it godliness. So much of faith operating through you that you call it faithfulness. It says that you'll have so much perfection that it steps into perfectness, which is the overflow of perfection. I just heard the spirit of the living God just speak to me and told me, he said, son, elaborate on the fact that when you have so much faith, you step into faithfulness. So tell the people that every time they have missed me, it was because of the lack of faith. If you look back at your life, every time that you have felt a lack of energy, a lack of focus, a lack of passion, a lack of excellence, it was all a faith problem. Faith problems is the master of fainting. Faith problems is the master of fainting. And that's why the word of God says about uh, King Jesus. Remember King Jesus said, I prayed for you that your faith fell not. You remember that? He said, I prayed for you that your faith fell not. Why was he saying, I pray for you that your faith fell not? Because he's saying, if your faith ever gets interrupted, you're going to find yourself doing things that are, is in disobedience to me. So all sin is connected to the, 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 the tampering with faith. He did not many miracles because of their faith. They didn't use it. They didn't have it. They didn't operate in it. So they missed Jesus because of a faith violation. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. You notice all he was telling to Lazarus' sisters, didn't I say if you believe, you will see the glory of God? That's all he kept reiterating to them. All he kept on reiterating to Lazarus' sisters was, didn't I tell you that if you have faith, you'll see. So even the seer's anointing is connected to you protecting your faith. So if you don't protect your faith in King Jesus, your sight system shuts off. Your accuracy shuts off. And you can't even see the, the, the pit. You can't even see the ditch. 
You can't even see hellfire in front of you. You see what I'm saying? So now you, and that's why the Bible says, when I come back to the earth, will I find faith? You notice King Jesus didn't say, when I come back, will I find love? When, when I come back, will I find those that have respect for me? He said, will I find faith? Because faith is packaging all those qualities that you need in order to step into perfectness. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Preach like skin, preach like skin. <laughs> Saints, I'm playing with you, I'm playing with you. I'm, I, I, I'm trolling, I'm trolling. I'm trolling, I'm trolling. I'm trolling, I'm trolling. Preach caramel, preach caramel. I'm preaching, I'm doing the best I can, I'm preaching. Pat myself on the back, preach caramel. Caramel. Shop, 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 shop. Shop, shop. Wake yourself up. There are about two people about to start commenting on the line because they fell asleep. Wake yourself up, player. Pimping. <laughs> Pimping distress. Wake yourself up. I'm talking to you. I see you. I'm talking to you. Get up. You know you gotta pee a little bit. You already gotta pee. You holding up your pee. Get up, get up. I'm talking to you. Yeah, you. I see you right there. How you doing? Colossians chapter three. It tells you that you have to pit on kindness. So kindness is not something that automatically flows through you. You got to put it on like you put on clothes. You put on clothes by decision. God never put no clothes on you. Wait for God to put some clothes on you tomorrow. You see how you walk outside butt naked. Wait to see. Try it. Try it. Walk outside. Tell them, the Lord about to put some clothes on me today. The Lord about to put some clothes on me. Go walk down the street. Go, go to your job and see what happens. Go to your job and see what happened. Talking about the Lord gonna put some clothes on you. Lord ain't gonna put no dang on clothes on you. Tells the Lord gonna dress me today. He gonna dress me today. See, that shows you that there's certain type, there's certain realms of your walk of salvation that is completely in your jurisdiction, and God does not cross over that. You have to make a decision to put clothes on. You have to make a decision to put on kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, that's teachability, long-suffering. Why did he say long-suffering? Because long-suffering is unwavering resistance to sin. I just heard the Spirit of God give me that definition, which is so amazing to me. Did you catch that? Long suffering. I'm giving you a definition so, so you can walk with this, walk in this. This is anointing. Ah. Long suffering is unwavering resistance against sin. And long suffering is unwavering in your expectation of deliverance. From a trial, from a season, from discomfort. It's unwavering expectation in your redemption that God will redeem you from a sickness, a, 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 a financial stronghold, a mental issue, a physical issue, a, a, a relationship issue. It could be one of your co-workers. You got to have long suffering. That means that you refuse to let your tolerance be dominated by demonic presence. Oh, Jesus. Ha, ya, 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 ya. Ho, 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 ho. You're refusing to let your tolerance be infected by demonic suggestion. Isn't that good? I'm in Colossians chapter 3. You better not eat from the tree. Now look at this here. It says you have to pit on meekness. That means that you have to make a decision every day is a learning day. You're going to learn everything in the day that God wants you to learn. 
Are you catching this? You got to put on meekness. That means that every single day I'm going to be a student at King Jesus' feet. I'm going to learn new things from him. I'm going to find out a different dimension of his thoughts. I'm going to discover a different level of how he wants to speak to me, work in me, flow through me. A day is a door for discovery. A day is a door for discovery. God gave you a day for you to unlock a dimension. God gave you a day so that you could read his diary. God writes in a day. He hides it away. And when you pray, he begins to display. A day is a diary that God has disguised. There's something intimate about every day. Every day has an intimacy that the Lord is thinking about, that he hides it away, that if you're serious about your love life with him, you will locate it. Passionate love locates the diary of God. Dedication gives you revelation of his secrets, his mysteries, and his confidential info. You can't receive God's classified information if you're not in his class. Well, I'm not in God's class. I don't know how to get there. Through pitting on meekness. That's where he teach you as a classroom. Come learn of me as a 